If you have never heard of simulation hypothesis, this may seem implausible to you, but you need to be aware of the fact that some of the most esteemed scientists, technologists, and philosophers in the world, believe that it is more likely than not, that we are living in an artificial reality. The simulation hypothesis proposes that our entire existence is a computer simulation, or other type of simulated reality. Welcome back to my channel. We live in a simulation and I have the proof. A simulation may contain cognizant minds, who may, or may not be aware that they are living in a simulation. This differs significantly from the current technologically realizable concept of virtual reality, which is readily distinguishable from actuality. In contrast, it would be difficult or impossible to distinguish true reality from simulated reality. There have been numerous discussions on this topic, extending from philosophical discourse to computing applications. Is this the case? We are experiencing something real? Perhaps a better query would be, what is reality? Could everything we see and experience encompass everything that exists in the universe? Is all artificial? According to proponents of simulation theory, not only is it feasible that we are living in a simulation, it is possibly to live inside one. Nick Bostrom, an Oxford philosopher who published a paper on the topic in 2003, is the originator of contemporary simulation theory. Assuming it is possible to live in a simulation. Bostrom introduces the simulation trilemma, which stipulates that one of the following must be true. First, we annihilate ourselves before creating a simulation. Second, we create simulations and we will use them. Three, we are capable of creating a simulation but choose not to. Clearly, we are in a simulation. Out of three choices, there are two in which simulations are possible and we have 66% chances of being in one following this thinking. Each of these, according to Bostrom, is equally likely to be true. And I do not believe that to be controversial. And it goes in both directions, if we can simulate worlds, and those worlds can create their own simulations, there is a non-zero chance that we ourselves are simulated. For amusement, we use computer models to analyze the human population and predict the weather. We simulate everything, and once a civilization is able to create a realistic simulation, the most apparent simulation to create, is that of its own origins. Bostrom refers to this as an ancestral simulation, and a civilization capable of creating such simulations would not construct just one. If you can create a simulation, then who's stopping you of creating two of them? How about 1000 or 100,000 simulations? How about a billion of them? It's all about computer power and computer power is our least problem. If humanity will be able in the near future to create a simulation that those inside consider it as being as real as the real world, and I believe we are on the verge to do that in our lifetime, so we will get to witness it. But who knows, maybe the big Silicon Valley companies have had already achieved that in their laboratories, but have not yet made known to the general public. Who think that Google, or Apple or Microsoft or whatever other software company, made known all its secret projects, that person is naive. Nick Bostrom believes that it will be possible in the future to simulate the actions of all the neurons in the brain, and simulate the sensory input to that brain with sufficient accuracy, to convince the simulation that it is a real person, it just proved that Matrix is real. It would seem impossible for this to occur on a scale comparable to our universe, but Bostrom's calculations indicate that a super-advanced civilization could do this on such a large scale, that virtual minds, would vastly outnumber actual minds. It would produce a large number of simulated civilizations, some of which could construct their own simulations of the universe and so on, like Russian nesting dolls of reality. In order to study the behavior of the types of minds that existed in the past, and to gain a better understanding of its own past, a technologically advanced civilization may wish to conduct such simulations for scientific purposes. How could all of this be possible? According to experts on the subject, this civilization would require a planet-sized computer. 
Bostrom's strongest argument for this belief is the simulation argument. If an advanced civilization were to create ancestral simulations, then the majority of self-aware minds that ever come into existence are simulated ones. The theory of the Boltzmann brain argues that in an infinite multiverse, it should be vastly more common for particles to randomly assemble into a brain having the exact same experience as you do right now, than for particles to produce big bangs. If you are a character in that simulation, in that universe of yours, you believe you have free will and evolve to invent technology, and then wish to create a computer. When Elon Musk was asked his opinion, it was likely that he believed our reality to be the original fundamental reality. The probability that we are in a base reality is one in a billion billions. I would estimate that there is a greater than 50% probability that everything we experience is artificial, all we see around us is a part of a simulated reality. What's the deal with the origin of the universe? From a religious standpoint, God created everything, and I have no problem with that. As a man of science, I see it as hubris to refute God. Humanity is irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. One must be humble in front of the universe, in front of God. Where was God before the moment of creation? What triggered the Big Bang in the first place? Why did God decide to snap his fingertips to create the universe? If you ask the physicists to explain what was before the universe, they will provide you with an answer ranging from conformal cyclic cosmology, to universes appearing out of nothing, due to quantum randomness, others may say that everything is nothing and vice versa. In order for our universe to be able to pop up out of nothing, its total energy must be zero. Let's assume that someone, somewhere, decided to run a program containing all of the laws of the universe. The source code contains the concepts of electromagnetism, strong force, weak force, and gravity. Then the speed of light is assigned a value, there is a code for Planck's constants, the fine-tuning constant, the mass of the electron, and so on, as well as Avogadro's numbers and a host of other rules that govern the behavior of everything that exists, all part of the program. Our strict laws of physics point to the possibility of a simulation. Who and why, restricted the speed of light. Why the universe is fine-tuned. If all the constants are chosen correctly, life, intelligent life will be possible within this context. Is Sims real? For them, for the characters inside, one can argue it is. But we know Sims is not real, we create it for out entertainment. It would make sense to be occasional errors if we inhabit an artificial reality, there are glitches in the matrix. Could the Mandela effect be a reality glitch? The Mandela effect is when a significant number of people have inaccurate memories of past events. Millions of individuals recall Nelson Mandela's death in prison. People recall his wife walking alongside his casket, during a several hours funeral procession that was broadcast on television that day. But this never occurred. And there are numerous other examples, such as the Berenstain Bears, which people insist have always been known as the Bernstein Bears. There are plenty examples but I will devote an episode to the Mandela Effect. I will not insist more on this matter. I believe you get the point. Others contend that the Deja Vu Effect, which we have all experienced at some point, is the simulation updating itself with new data. There are physicists that argue the reality is broken, see the double-slit experiment, or the entanglement phenomenon in quantum mechanics. For me, the most terrific fact, is that we reside in a universe containing 200 billion trillion stars, the universe is big, mind-boggling big and old, and even if one can accept that life is scarce, one would expect to find evidence of it somewhere. This is the Fermi paradox, which is the discrepancy between the lack of conclusive evidence of advanced extraterrestrial life, and its evidently high a priori probability. If life is expected to exist, then someone should and must have come calling by now. The famous Drake equation predicts that there should be over a million technologically advanced civilizations in our galaxy alone. On average, the nearest one should be approximately 100 light years distant. However, there is nothing that we can see. Then, where is everyone? Are we truly alone in the universe, or is our program designed specifically for us? 
To simulate the entire universe, evidently more advanced technology is required than what we possess. But this does not imply that we won't succeed. Moore's law states that computing capacity doubles every 18 months, and this has held true for approximately 50 years. This is slowing slightly, but only due to physical constraints, assuming we can learn to make microchips smaller. There is no question that we will. Artificial intelligence is prophesied to be inevitable within our lifetimes. Remember the computer games from the 80s or 90s, now see the realistic world depicted in the computer games today. Imagine how these will be 50 years from now. What about 100 years from now? How about 1000 years from now? Or will be they indistinguishable from our reality? Will the NPC characters have their own mind, their own free will? In fact I suspect that a computer game from the future will allow the player to be godlike within that context, to experience time travel and to simulate whatever scenario he wants. The humanity will reach K1 and if we still be here, if we don't annihilate ourselves, we will make the transition, slowly at first, to K2 status, a matryoshka brain. We cannot comprehend the computing power. Video games are frequently used by proponents of simulation theory to illustrate, if not prove, that our reality is artificial. Only the data that the participant sees or interacts with is rendered. If a tree or a building is a mile distant from you in a video game, the entire object is not rendered. The game engine only renders the minimal amount of information necessary to make the object appear realistic. A building in the distance is rendered as a few pixels, becoming more complex as it approaches. The engine renders more details, but it is merely a facade. The engine does not calculate what's inside the building, because it knows how much data to send you, and does not calculate anything else. If we are living in a simulation, it would make sense that our reality is also simulated, and we could test this hypothesis. Even though our universe is filled with galaxies, these galaxies may not actually exist. This is similar to a video game engine. If we are living in a simulation, stars and galaxies may be nothing more than projections. And only as we approach do these projections become more specific. This is a fantastic method for conserving computational resources. And it makes sense why there is a cap on the speed of light, by the time someone approaches a distant star or a galaxy, the creators would have enough time to render them. Quantum entanglement makes sense only if there is a program at work, as only the program can disregard the laws of physics, entanglement builds bridges, shortcuts in the fabric of space-time, involving the concept of time itself. The quantum computer is at the next corner, we will see if we can break the computation limit of our universe, if we really live in a simulation, then the creators must intervene at some point, or they may conspire so that our scientists, will not be able to progress further into development of quantum computers. The Big Bang can be viewed as the simulation starting up with a huge explosion, but like I have said already, the Big Bang was neither big, nor came with a bang. We have not discovered extraterrestrials, they are not present in the simulation. Why it seems that the UFOs appear to defy the constraints of physics. Because their programs are controlled by the simulation's designers. They are not required to adhere to the laws of physics, but who establish these laws? Let me give you my answer. Scientists, or better say the physicists, since I am one of them, speak in riddles when confronted with hard questions, they are afraid of giving definitive answers. But I believe there is a good chance that we are not real, all we see and experience around us may very well be a simulation, and this is true in some sense, since around every and each of us is a thermal shell, a horizon, located at around 20 billion light years away, there is a horizon out there, and on its surface everything in the universe is encoded, just like a hologram. who have the code to decode the hologram, that makes possible the 3D universe in which we live.